only way to run a business is the ability to attract and keep customers, build up a loyalty. So you have to give customers what they think is of value to them. This theme of innovation, which really was, was in the DNA of, yeah. of Four Seasons right from the beginning. You put in better pipes so there wouldn't be yeah. noise, better mattresses in, in the hotel gyms, spas, all kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. How did you know that customers would want that? Was it, was it an instinct? Was it learned by trying stuff? Well, you know, as I say, uh, you know, my background, I came from a poor immigrant household, so... You know, Luxury hotels was not... I had no idea yeah. what they were. I mean, a big, a big deal for me would be a trip to Buffalo. Um, but I approached the business not from understanding the hotel business, but from a customer's perspective. What would a customer consider to be of use and value to them? So the innovations, the ideas that we came up with were all about would this be something that would be useful and appreciated for somebody who's leaving their office and home and spending a night or two away. So it was replacing what they would generally think would be helpful. So all the ideas that we've come up with over the many years, and I think the company has become what it is, uh, is through innovation. And it's always about, as you well know, look, the only way to run a business is the ability to attract and keep customers, build up a loyalty. So you have to give customers what they think is of value to them. So all these ideas were simply make that, so, the, so that the customer using your product would have a good experience. Mm -hmm. And most of the things we came up with over the years, and there's many, many of them, have now all been adopted by the industry as yeah. a norm. So what people thought we were doing was way off the mark, and we couldn't keep it up, well, they've all bought into it. So it's... Um, it's again what everybody want to want a business. You know, if you can't attract your customer to buy your product, you haven't got a business. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't rocket scientist thinking. It was anybody in this room could have come up with the same thoughts. What would you require? What would suit your needs when you're away from your office or home? Mm -hmm. So those are all the things we have, you know, and we're to this day still innovating coming up with new ideas. Yeah, it never stops. But the thing about innovation is sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about something that didn't work and, and what you learned from it? I certainly get a sense from your book that Vancouver was a tough slog. Yeah. Well, uh, like the innovations I've talked about are small things. They don't create the works and doesn't work. Yeah. But business decisions do. And those don't always come out the way you think. Uh, an expression I've often used with our people, if you're always right, you're wrong. Because then you've never taken that little step off the beaten track to see what would happen if you did something. Well, um, fortunately, a major mishap turned into a, uh, a major benefit. As you know, the first hotel, you build it, you own it, you run it. So that's what I did. So the first, second, third, fourth hotel, we owned the real estate and we ran it. And that was okay because that's my business, real estate. So I was never concerned about the fluctuations in, of the markets. Well, in the mid-70s, we were building a hotel in Vancouver and the cost went sky high. And we're not owning it, but we were leasing it, so it was the same thing. It was our responsibility. And way beyond what the hotel could ever afford uh, to cost. So I was caught, because that was our obligation, and I could go broke slowly by, you know, cutting back on it, or quickly by spending money I didn't have. Mm -hmm. The landlords were three of Canada's major institutions. Uh, it was the Toronto Dominion Bank, 
At that time, Eaton's, uh, the center, the retailer, uh, and Cadillac Fairview. So in dealing with them, I said, look, this is, you've got the keys. Take my company. There's nothing more I can do because we can't finish what we set out to do. Uh, but if you will change this business deal, I think this hotel will be a great benefit to your development because it was part of Pacific Center. So it was a mixed-use complex, and the hotel was going to give it a major image. Um, so on a handshake, they said, look, you finish the hotel as we agreed to, and we'll sit down after. If you've done what we thought is the right thing, we'll, we'll talk about it. And they did. So they restructured. I spent money I didn't have to finish the hotel as we initially intended. Um, they came back after, and we sat down and restructured the deal and made it reasonable for all of us. So that mistake made me understand what I can't do, which was continue to own the real estate and run a hotel. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning of the business model that we, Four Seasons, presently runs on today as being a management company yeah. that I would agree to go forward with investing in future hotels, but that which I could afford to lose, whether it was whatever, 5, 10, 15% of equity. But I wanted the privilege, if more money was required, that I could reduce my equity, or I could come up with the money if I could afford to. So that protected me from getting into a financial problem again as a result of owning real estate. And that's the business model that we run to this day. We are a management company. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have ownership, small portions in some hotels. We still own Vancouver. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, so that mistake mm -hmm. gave me an insight to what allowed Four Seasons to create a business model that many other hotel companies have tried to emulate. Yeah. Because it's a very good business to be in by not getting caught with the cyclical nature of the, of the business. Of real estate. And that also allowed you to really focus on, on something that you're very good at and probably most known for is this, this issue of people and culture. And um, I would say, as a business person, you are completely iconic in terms of your focus on people. People who work for you, and as you say, people that you host in your hotels. And I, I just realized today, just listen to this, Four Seasons has been named one of the 100 best companies to work for by Fortune every year since the survey's inception in 1998. Globally. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that focus on people translated into this extraordinary culture at, at Four Seasons. Where did that people focus come from? Well, it's, it's part of a strategy that uh, you set out to create. And that award is one we're very proud of because there's only 12 companies that have been part of that mm -hmm. 100 best companies to work for since it started. So we're part of a very small, small group. group. As I mentioned before, when London, England became the prototype, yeah. and after we built that hotel, that's when I decided to go into the, make it my career. The first strategic decision was a result of what we had accomplished at that hotel. And that's when I decided that we would only operate medium-sized hotels of exceptional quality and to be the best. Well, the idea, because that's, that's what we had accomplished with that hotel in London. We were voted the best hotel in Europe in its first year of operation and the best hotel in London. And we are up against the world's best hotels. You've all heard of them. Connaught, Claridge, Savoy, Ritz, Dorchester, Grosvenor. These were the world's best hotels at that time. And we beat them on their home territory. And I knew why we beat them. It wasn't because we built a better building. We didn't. 
They were palaces, ours was just a modern new building. It was how we dealt with the customer and the service. So we were better there against them because of our service. So that became the second strategic decision as a result of what I just said. That we would make the quality of our service our competitive advantage and our distinguishing factor to make us the best. It's one thing to say you're going to build something and the quality. But when I say we're going to be the best, or try to be the best, that is what I figured we could separate ourselves from the competition. Because you can't do it through your architecture and decor. What you build today is going to be outdated five, ten years from today. So you had to have an intangible that was sustainable. 